to thank our second sponsor. Our super sponsor this year, Intuitive View. <laughs> Intuitive View is a student platform that provides students with a tangible experience in the life of a real engineer through participation in several activities based on the real intuitive project. It also gives students and recent graduates a meaningful connection to the industry by connecting them with subject matter experts. We really thank, uh, we really thank their support this year and we hope uh, uh, you guys can support us next year as well. And we also need to thank our uh, supervisor, Professor Christopolo, also grad student, everyone, and Marilyn to help us to have this shape pad. So, tomorrow's power. Um, 
the columns from the top floor um, to the middle floor, it's, it's like in the middle section. But then from the bottom to the uh, middle floor, it's like on the outside. So uh, to, in order to deal with this continuity, we have to put a lot of thought and effort into it. Um, so and, the, and this challenge also has led to our second biggest issue, which was constructability. Since we have to connect these two columns to make um, um, a rigid um, connection between um, the two parts of our, our tower of our structure. And the last challenge was um, the slenderness of the inner core. Um, our inner core this year was just um, 5.5, five, uh, uh, it's a 5.5 five five square, which um, is really slender compared to um, what we have in the past. So um, these are the three main challenges we had this year. So after we have came up with our preliminary design, we then use our in-house Python program, AutoBuilder, um, uh, for large-scale iteration. So with AutoBuilder, we use different types of bracing schemes, and we also try different types of um, member sections. For example, for bracing scheme, we, we try double axis, um, single axis that spans either uh, single floor or two floors. And for member sections, we have like single columns and double columns. Um, so for this year's design, we have made uh, four major and local assumptions. First being fixed connections. Um, to ensure this um, assumption is valid in our structure, uh, we have multiple gusset plates and uh, very detailed connections at every single joint. Um, second assumption is that we assume linear elastic behavior. So in the past, um, uh, from a past experience, we've noticed uh, Bell's exhibits linear um, elastic behavior before it failures. And since that, we have assigned every member to be under its capacity. Um, this uh, does this uh, assumption is valid. Third, we assume balsa is an isotropic material um, for simplicity. Last, we assume it's uh, we assume classical constant damping uh, with a damping ratio of five percent. So now we'll go through our overall structural concept. Um, our structural system this year can be broken down into two parts. Um, the first part being uh, from the bottom floor, from the first floor to the tenth floor, where we have a pair of coupled shear walls on the side, as you can see on this figure on the right. And the second part uh, spans from the eighth floor to the twentieth floor, where we have like a shear walls coupled with a brace frame. It's like this skinny part on like the top uh, portion of the structure. Um, so this year, um, uh, one of our design focus this year was to ensure that our lateral force resistance system were, was designed to be on the same plane of action. Um, this is to ensure that we have an efficient load uh, lateral transfer from the top floor um, all the way down to our base plate or our foundation. In addition to that, we have additional exterior post plate brace, um, uh, uh, post tube brace to provide the proportional um, stability um, due to the given continuous portion of the If you can go back to the previous slide, um, as you can see, um, the bottom of the structure is basically an, an octagon with braces on every single side, and those braces would be resisting uh, any potential portion that might happen um, during our shaping. Um, uh, construction perfection and uh, material variability has always been an issue. Uh, that's why this year we did a uh, free vibration test uh, to get, calibrate our analytical model in SAP 2000. Um, there are three major, major as uh, there are three major aspects that we calibrate. First is the density of, of vessel width. Uh, the density of vessel width was calibrated to match uh, our final tower weight. Uh, second, we calibrate uh, our young modules, the, the young modules of vessel width uh, to match our tower natural frequency that we obtain from our free vibration test. And this year, uh, the, our tower period is 0.15 seconds. Last, uh, we calibrate the damping ratio of the time history analysis uh, to match the damping ratio obtained from our free vibration test. Um, and that damping ratio is obtained through the log damping method. And this year, we have a damping ratio of 5% as well, which um, agrees with our initial assumption. Now I will go through the instruction method. 
First, we did our model in Revit. Then we exported to AutoCAD to make jigs. This year, we have two jigs, one for inner plan, another one for one to ten for the outer plan. We first do the inner core assembly. We build the two for the inner core from the eighth floor to the 20th floor. Then we do those flats around the, around the two. Then we have those interior shear work added on it. Then we put the four plans to complete the shape and put the interior core on it. When we do the frames, we use the jigs as shown on the picture to make sure our plan will be flat and will be complete. Then we put them as shown here. And this is our finished tower. Good analysis result and prediction. The ground motion one is that the pig is placed to be 0 0.19 inches, and the ground motion two, the pig is placed to will be 0 0.91 inches. For peak room acceleration, we expect ground motion one to have 0 0.82 g, and the ground motion two to be 0.64 g. The final value will be.